Hey there everyone, it's Mr. Stubstep, and today I'm going to be doing a video that is very different from my usual content, but I think it'll serve as a great reference for people considering the Kentucky Bourbon Trail, or those already on it. The video will be broken down by chapters down below, so please reference those or click to whichever portions you wanted to go to. It'll have the intro, the basics of the Bourbon Trail, tips and tricks, quick opinions on every distillery by region, as well as a ranking. I'll probably just end up doing my top 10 and then gifts at the end. I don't want to spoil anything major, but if you complete everything, there are gifts. I don't usually do scripted videos, but this time I will do it just to avoid rambling on too much. I'm not a huge alcohol drinker. My first drink was when I was 20, and my wife was the one that convinced me to start this tour, and I never really thought we would ever complete it, but here we are. I'm just an average social kind of party binge drinker, which is not very healthy, but I never really had an appreciation for flavors before this tour. You could have called me a delinquent. We have lived in Louisville, Kentucky for the past two years, and you'll find that it is a very advantageous position to be in for completing the Bourbon Trail. So you may have stumbled upon this video and you might ask, what is the Bourbon Trail? Overall, the Bourbon Trail is essentially 42 bourbon distilleries at the time of filming this video that pay annual dues to be put on a trail that is advertised or visiting and completing the tour is incentivized through gifts and other things. I'm looking at all of you who liked 100% things. When we started this tour, there were only 41, so during the process of us completing our own trail, one more was added, which is actually quite common. Um, there are 18 signature distilleries, or also known as legacy distilleries, or the much larger output distilleries. Examples are like Bullet, James Beam, also known as Jim Beam, and many others. And then there are 24 craft distilleries, which are much smaller output and do many things all on site. There are pros and cons to both. You can complete them separately, so you can complete all of the legacy distilleries, get stamps for all those, and complete that trail, or you can do all the craft ones and complete that trail. We got stamps for completing both sets. The legacy, the legacy distilleries usually have a long history, massive bourbon output, more professional tours, and you can find their product more easily, for example, outside of Kentucky or even worldwide. Of course, they will also have select choices only on the distillery or while supplies last, and a lot of you might think of Buffalo Trace, and while it is popular and everything, they're actually not on the bourbon trail, and that is their argument, is because they're so popular and so desired already within the bourbon community, they don't need to be on the trail. Um, the craft tours are much more intimate, usually smaller groups. There was a lot of times where my wife and I, we were the only ones, and we got like a private tour without paying for one, essentially. Um, they have a more, much more recent history and a greater variety in product. Just to be clear, these are all generalizations. So there are 42 distilleries, and while they have many similarities, they also are very unique in their own ways. And the only common thing that they have between them is they have something to do with a bourbon type product. All right, for the next couple portions of this video, I will be referencing the distillery map that you can get at any of the distilleries that you go on your tour, as well as this guide. So this will be the tips and tricks section. For completing the tours, you technically don't have to pay for tours and tastings or something even more. Theoretically, you could just visit and get a stamp. We did at least a tasting at every distillery, if not a tour. We probably did at least a tour at 37 of them out of the 42, and some we were short of time, so we did a tasting, or they just didn't have a tour option because of seasonal requirements or construction. We didn't do anything more than a tour because the more exclusive tours can get very expensive. Pretty much every tour includes a tasting, and they can range from zero to $40 per person. At some locations, military, first responders, or other occupations can get in for free or at a discount. Your biggest limitations will be time, money, and routing between the distilleries. Before you start on the trail or at your first distillery, you should purchase this passport that all the distilleries were stamped along the way. It's an example of Wild Turkey. There's very useful information about bourbon, all the distilleries, their locations, distances between them, and many other things that are very useful. Then you have to ask yourself, how much time do you actually have? The passport says you can do 18 signature distilleries in five days and 24 craft distilleries in six days. I think the only way that would be possible is if you didn't drink at every single one, and if you did, you had somebody driving you. Something that was very popular was bachelor parties getting on a bourbon bus and hitting up all the distilleries in whatever region of Kentucky they were in. We started in January of 2023 and just finished mid-August, so about five and a half months. We were both working, so probably about one weekend every month, we knocked out a bunch and continued to do that. Being in Louisville, the farthest we had to drive to get to the distillery was two and a half hours. So... You can see we're here in Louisville, and then the radius expands. So the farthest we had to drive was about two and a half hours. So all the way across, you're looking about four and a half to five hour radius that all the distilleries will fall within Kentucky. It isn't too bad, but if you're looking to just knock out a bunch of close ones, then Louisville is probably your best bet. 
tours and tastings range between 15 to 90 minutes, so also take that into your planning considerations. Many take reservations for whatever tour you're looking for online. They will lay out options, and you can decide how deluxe you want your experience or if you just want to do a drive-by and stamp. The most difficult one to coordinate was Old Pogue because they only take those with an appointment and are so far out of the way, so plan accordingly for that one. Also, not all of them are open on a similar, similar basis. Some open and close seasonally. Some are only Monday through Saturday. Some every day. Some Thursday through Sunday. So also take that into your planning considerations. The best time of year is probably the spring and summertime. Some have beautiful, expansive properties that really blossom during the spring and summer months. The first that comes to mind is Woodford Reserve. And I'll be trying to show photos throughout this as well that are just relevant. If I took them or just some photos online. And others, like in downtown Louisville, are just in the building with a distillery, so the month isn't as important. During the summer months, it does get hot, and being next to some of the cooks and stills can get quite warm. We would always try to knock out as many as we could in an area so we wouldn't have to double back later. For example, we knocked out Louisville, because many were within walking distance living downtown. We knocked out Bardstown, Lexington, and then we went up north for a Taylor Swift concert and a Cincinnati Reds game and knocked out all the ones in the north. The biggest pain was the western section. You also cross over into central time. You can see here is the time zone divide from eastern to central. So keep that in mind as well. In my opinion, doing three full tours or tastings a day is the comfort zone. Two is ideal, but three is probably more optimal for completing the trail. After three, things start blending together, and no matter how good the spirits were, I just started to feel sick. Maybe I'm just weak like that. For example, most recently, we knocked out five plus one in the west over a Saturday and Sunday. We knocked these three plus one bonus one in Tennessee because it, uh, and that one in Tennessee actually kind of felt sacrilegious after doing all the ones in Kentucky, but they had a special stave if you did these three that were partnered, which probably exists because they were so far removed from the rest of the distilleries on the trail, the Tennessee one didn't count towards anything, but more shot glasses and that stave. We stayed at a hotel in Franklin and then did the last two on the trail altogether because the, just the timing and when these were open didn't work out, so we had to do these last two on Sunday. Once again, it is up to you how much time you have and want to de dedicate to this venture. Could you honestly go to your favorite signature and try one craft and get about 90% of everything the trail has to offer? Yes, but that last 10% can have some magical things, and every once in a while you hit a drink that really does everything you're looking for in a spirit. Please feel free to comment below your experiences or any questions you have in general about the tour. I'll be happy to answer to the best of my ability. If I'm not a professional or have education or prior experience with bourbon, many that you will meet at the distilleries have a long family line of distilling or went to school for distilling or agriculture or mechanical engineering to construct all the necessary components to make bourbon or they went to school for tourism or something completely unrelated. If you like food and drinking tours of any kind, you will enjoy these. All right, so now we will get into the opinions I developed about each of these distilleries. I mainly care about the drinks they served, but the tour, grounds, accessibility, price, and personalities will all play a part in what I say. They will be quick to avoid making this video super long, and at the end of this section, I will talk my top 10 and then maybe bring up some bottles that we purchased throughout the trail. You may be the type of person that wants something from every distillery if a stamp isn't enough. Obviously, a bottle or merch or something plus tours at every location will get very expensive. So we just settled on a pin from whichever ones had pins, since they were usually under $5. I'll probably have shown a photo of our uh, little cork board. So I'll go by region, starting with the signature distilleries, then the craft, then I'll go to a new region, and I'll continue that pattern until all four regions are complete, and then I will do top, my top 10. Like always, there are chapters down below. So to start, all of the distilleries are solid. They wouldn't be on the bourbon trail if they weren't. None were bad enough for me to recommend not going there, and even if there was one that bad, I wouldn't say because it's kind of screwed up. I'm just one opinion with one palate. My least favorite could be your favorite. It's all up to the drinker and the drink. There is enough demand for each of these distilleries to be operational in an already competitive market, and majority of them get along and support each other. You'll find that bulb and culture is great. So, starting with the central region, so pretty much everything in this little spot. Some of these on the fringe can be kind of argued for other regions, but I'll be including all of these. You can see the gray, those will be the legacy distilleries and they correspond to the numbers here on the bottom left. And then all the colorful ones are gonna be the craft ones and they correspond to different regions as well. So within right here in this central region. So the first one, Evan Williams was the first tour that we went on. They had an interesting approach to the tour as well as creating an environment like you were back in the early days of bourbon in Kentucky. My favorite bourbon from them was their red label. Let me know if any of our favorites match and what your favorite is if it doesn't match. 
Next up is Angel's Envy. Angel's Envy was one of my favorites. They helped me fall in love with rye whiskeys and taught me the differences in flavor by adding water or ice to help more flavors blossom. I really like their rye whiskey the most. Michter's, solid all around. Great tasting lineup to notice small differences between previous drinks. My favorite was their barrel strength rye whiskey. Old Forester, another one of both of our favorites. Great location downtown. I usually had low hopes for the bigger production distilleries, but many blew me away, including this one. The chocolates were phenomenal. My favorite was the Prohibition style, followed by their Statesman. Rabbit Hole. They have a cool and sleek modern design. They also provided drinks at the beginning of the tour, as opposed to many doing drinks at the end. Many will allow you a cocktail for purchase during the tour, though. I like their Derringer Neat and the Boxer Grill on the rocks. Stitzel Weller. Awesome history, and you'll start seeing how many families in the bourbon industry are intertwined in some way. The Blade & Bow was my favorite. There was also a collectible feature to the keys on these bottles. Four Roses. Beautiful architecture on the campus, solid bourbon. My favorite was their small batch. Heaven Hill. They carry a bunch of different labels and mainly serve as hosting the largest area for aging bourbon. My favorite was the Elijah Craig Small Batch Rye Whiskey. That was a mouthful. Also, if I say any terms that are confusing, you will learn many of those shortly when you go to a distillery. James Bean, one of my wife's favorites. I was a bit of a hater because of how easily accessible it is, but their spirits and tour were amazing. My favorite was the Basil Hayden cask finish. Lux Row, they carry many different labels because many distilleries do all the work for a label's recipe. Everything they carried was amazing, and our favorite was the Davis County Light Toast French Oak. Bardstown Bourbon Company, one of my favorite design bottles, very modernized site, and the gentleman that was our tour guide gave one of the best explanations we have ever had for bourbon. Almost no need for questions. Tasting this was up front, which is cool, and my favorite was their Fusion Series. Maker's Mark. Most everyone knows Maker's Mark with their signature dip bottles. Great art on the campus. I enjoyed the 46 cast strength the most. We wanted to dip our own bottle, but couldn't do that specific bourbon, unfortunately. Wild Turkey, we could only do a tasting because tours weren't available due to reconstruction. They had a temporary gift shop when we visited. I liked their 101 rye. Okay, so now moving on to the craft distilleries still within the central region. Kentucky Peerless, one of my wife's favorites, extremely down to earth feel and the tour guide we had just gave off the best vibes like we were family friends visiting their house. Great looking bottles and solid spirits all around. Keep in mind, you may get different tour guides depending on the time and distillery. The best was their single barrel bourbon brulee, which is also an awesome name. Copper and Kings. This was a great distillery, but if I remember correctly, they had no actual bourbon products, just things aged in bourbon barrels. They specialized in brandy and had an interesting way to age barrels. My favorite was the Butcher Town. Kentucky Artisan. You might know them as the Jefferson's Aged at Sea. Really interesting take on bourbon aging and allows for unique flavor profiles. The best was their Whiskey Row Bottle and Bond. Jep the Creed, a solid distillery with good pizza. This one was just a tasting and many of their drinks serve as great mixers. My favorites were the Bloody Butcher's Creed and the Red, White, and Blue. Preservation, this distillery is fairly new and doesn't have many of their own products on ground. However, everything they served was excellent, including a tequila. I really liked the Rare Perfection best. Willet, this distillery had an interesting shaped bottle based off of their pot still. I enjoyed the family estate bourbon the most. Log still. This distillery is slightly in the sticks, but is on a beautiful property. There's one stand-up bourbon that was slightly more exclusive, and we ended up getting a bottle of it. It was the Cold Spring Monks Road. Their barrel finished gin was also delicious. Limestone Branch. This was one of the handful of distilleries we got a private tour because no one else was touring during our time. This is fairly common at craft distilleries. This bourbon is normally recognized under the label Yellowstone. My favorite was the hand-picked collection, which will vary by employee because each employee can pick their barrel after working there for a certain amount of time. All right, now we will move to the bluegrass region, which includes all these blue ones and then a few legacy ones along the way. Or you could say the east, it's kind of eastern Kentucky, but they just call it the bluegrass. So starting out with the signature distilleries in the bluegrass region, we have Woodford Reserve. Prior to starting the trail, I thought this one would be my favorite because it was one of the few I had had prior. This property is one of the most beautiful and I've just always liked Woodford Reserve for bias reasons. Their double oaked is my favorite and it is easily accessible as well. 
Town Branch, or also called Lexington Brewing and Distilling, which can get confusing at times. These bottles have a very clean design, and they also had a wide selection of the Kentucky Bourbon Barrel Beer flavors, which you may be familiar with. The beer and bourbon is delicious, and my favorites are the Town Branch Single Barrel Reserve and the Tangerine flavor of their beer. Wilderness Trail. This distillery is kind of out on its own, and according to them, they are the only distillery to start out as a craft and graduate to a legacy, which is fairly impressive. Their small batch weeded bourbon was my favorite. Weeded bourbons tend to run slightly sweeter than their rye counterparts, and I have a bit of a sweet tooth. That is off the signature distilleries in this region. Many of the big name distilleries are central, so the radius is smaller if you're only looking to complete the legacy part of the trail. So now we'll move on to the craft in the bluegrass region, so all these blue ones. Whiskey Thief. This is the newest addition to the bourbon trail at the time of filming this video. It is all contained in essentially a barn, and you thieve the bourbon right out of the barrels. Their bourbon was great. My favorite was the rye and all. Castle and Key. This was another gorgeous piece of land, and I was surprised it was on the craft trail because it really does give off legacy vibes. They had an interesting array for tasting, and my favorite was the Sacred Spring Vodka. Barrel House Distilling. This is in a nice location next to another distillery and a great little place to hang out and eat. Many places have used barrels for sale, but this was the first one that advertised it. My favorite was their oak rum. James E. Pepper. Right next door to the Barrel House, they have the bottle with the signature 1776 on it, and that was my favorite spirit, their 1776 bourbon. Bluegrass Distillers. This is a cute distillery with amazing spirits inside. We tried so many different things, and we were pleased with everything. Our favorite was the Toasted Oak Bourbon Single Barrel. Hartfield and Company. Located in the nice little town of Paris, Kentucky, is this interesting distillery. Many distilleries have dogs and cats, but the pets here were great. Our favorite was the Kentucky Spirit Limited. It probably had the most unique nose I had ever experienced on the trail, and of course, we grabbed a bottle. All right, so now we're moving on to the northern region, which includes all of these. And there's only one signature distillery in the north, and that's Bullet. It can be kind of argued for the other regions, but this is another distillery that I had prior experience with their products. I just remember a burning sensation in college. Oh, how far we've come, as Matchbox 20 would say. These are some of my favorite bottles because of the canteen look they give, and they are very ergonomic for bartending. I really enjoyed their 10-year bourbon. That is it for this area for legacy. And once again, it could be argued as maybe central, but I just wanted to include one legacy for the North. Craft in the North. Neely Family. Starting out strong in the Northern region with this distillery. I won't spoil anything, but their history was one of the most interesting. Their bourbon can hold its own as well. And they also have many other flavorful options. For some reason, we left here slightly more buzzed than others. My favorite was their Four Grain Summer Sweet. Boone County, great tour. Just keep in mind if you visit the distilleries that aren't 24 seven on the weekends, you might not get as much action as during the week for the bourbon making process. I really like the toasted cask finish at this distillery. Second Sight, now this distillery had some of the best showmanship. It was really entertaining and it really revealed the ingenuity of the founders and owners. We enjoyed many flavors from here, but their Oak Eye Bourbon was our favorite, and I do have a bottle of it right here. Beautiful bottle. New Riff. This distillery has an awesome location next to one of the largest, if not the largest, liquor or beer store. It is massive and right on the border with Ohio, so close to Cincinnati. And New Riff had one of the best looking bottles, in my opinion, and their rye whiskey was my favorite. Now, Old Pogue. This one was tough to get to because we didn't get to it when we hit up the north originally, so we had to go back for it. It is an old school place, and with a simple selection and extremely solid whiskey, you must have an appointment. My favorite was their Master Select Bourbon, and it made for a perfect gift for one of my close friends. And finishing up finally with the Western region, which includes all of these, so not very many distilleries, but a lot of space to cover. Only one legacy in the West, and that is Green River. This was our final stop on the bourbon trail for the signature and for the trail as a whole. I appreciate places that don't just flood your palate with a dozen drinks every time. And have you experienced their spirits to the fullest? I enjoyed both of their bourbons. As far as craft in the West, these were our final stops before our move. And to be honest, we were dragging a little bit, but I would say the trail finished strong. Boundary Oak. This one is very close to Fort Knox, so if you're stationed or live nearby, this could be a great place to start to see if the trail is for you. They had many military or historically based bottles, which was cool. And my favorite was a combo of the St. Luke Lavender with their Lincoln. The Bard. This distillery was out of an old school. They had great bourbon, liqueurs, and moonshine. We liked the salted caramel and the Founders Select best. Casey Jones. This distillery started a mini trail of three to include the one distillery in Tennessee. They had many different things to try, and my favorite was their Mashville One. 
M.B. Rowland. This was another on the mini trail. They had many spirits to taste from as well. Sometimes choosing what to try is tough because you want to try new and unique things, but you also want to try staples to compare to other distilleries. The final on the mini trail was Old Glory. We just did a tasting, but it earned us some cool staves and shot glasses at each one. Here's an example of one of the staves. You may be familiar with the stave if you've ever done a flight or maybe uh, some shots. <laughs> to be clear, this part is, isn't part of the trail and you don't have to go to it. The final craft and final distillery for me to talk about is Dueling Grounds. Well-spoken tour guides and informational despite having been to 40 distilleries prior. It was our final craft stop and thankfully they were solid. We really enjoyed their cask strength bourbon. All right, and we are back to the table. We're now gonna go over my top 10 list, my top 10 favorite distilleries. Once again, these are my opinion. If any of them line up with some of your favorites, please let me know. And if not, maybe this will be an opportunity to try something new. So we'll start with number 10, and number 10 is Lux Row. So nothing was officially under the Lux Row name, but they carried many labels and all were great. Any place that has a drink good enough for us to want to buy a bottle on the spot is well worth being on this list. And their bottle is the only one we have actually finished so far. So I'll have at least shown a photo or something of it because we don't have the bottle anymore because it is fairly common. It's not like one of the super rare bottles that you just want to keep for a lifetime. All the other bottles we purchased are still sealed or are still being nursed. So it's the only one that we've completed so far. Number nine, Dueling Grounds being our final craft stop on the trail. And it was good enough to purchase a bottle from. It was just poetic. They allow you to pick samples from a menu. While you're on the tour, it gets prepared. Upon your return, you will have a nice spread to try, and the selection of cocktails were delicious as well. The tour guide spoke on some of the business side of a distillery, which is quite interesting. We got a bottle of their cast strength bourbon, and it comes in an awesome bottle. I mean, look at that. It's beautiful. Number eight, Harfield & Company. This distillery was great and gave a great, simple, homey feel. They had great spirits to back them up as well as other options. Their gin was great. I'm always a sucker for weeded bourbon, and they even had a Franken whiskey, which was terrible, but super interesting to try. Their Kentucky Spirit Limited would probably be a bottle we would purchase for life. And I've showed this one off already, but just an amazing bottle, great spirit. Old Forester, great location and a great distillery to stop by if you happen to be in downtown Louisville. I'll mention that the chocolate was amazing once again. Their bourbons were great and the tasting room really made you feel like you were someone important in the past. Clean tour overall and a great experience all around. Number six, Whiskey Thief. This one took a little off-roading in the Toyota Camry, but we made it. We only did the tasting and they used a Whiskey Thief to get our samples straight from the barrels on all of them. My wife uses Thief for her own bottle because we liked it so much. It poured rain while we were out there. So, oh no, we're trapped in a shelter with only bourbon and snacks. Just an amazing taste and a great addition to the collection. James Bean, also known as Jim Bean. Everyone is familiar with their flagship bourbon, but I was not familiar with their Basil Hayden line, which is delicious. Finishing bourbon and wine casks has grown in popularity and with good reason, because the flavor it adds is well worth it. The restaurant on site was amazing, and we also purchased a bottle of whiskey that they collabed with a Japanese distiller on called Legion. It was so unique and tasted great when we tried it at the restaurant. Moving on to number four, Neely Family. This distiller was full of surprises from their history to their master distiller being one of the youngest, if not the youngest, to be one. Their absinthe also won awards in Europe, which is unheard of because they made the absinthe as a side project. Usually a distillery that has a bunch of different products like moonshine or flavored whiskeys is just supplementing a lackluster bourbon, but all of their products hold their own. We purchased more bottles. We would have purchased more bottles on site if it wasn't financially irresponsible, but my wife really liked their absinthe, so we had to get a bottle of this. We did get a bottle of their summer sweet as well because these are both just so delicious. Number three, preservation. Besides having an awesome name, all the drinks they served were good enough to take home. We even had their tequila and our friend ended up buying a bottle and bringing her family later and then they all bought bottles too. Their bourbon was delicious, but it was one of the most expensive on the trail. Maybe one day I will get a bottle from here. Number two, Blue Grass Distillers. This distillery is right next to a brewery with an entrance just off the bike trail. This place was excellent and this is where my wife filled her birthday bottle and it was from a charity barrel. 
Everything was tasteful from their spirits to their spirit-infused baked goods and other treats. We even got a mini flight that, hold mo that had multiple flavors and one of the flavors was pickle whiskey. I dislike pickles, but my wife loves them, but I enjoy this whiskey. We returned again for a coin and saw full bottles of the pickle whiskey because we had only seen it in the samples before. And they said they weren't gonna make any more because of how polarized the demand was for it. So they gave us another taste of this and we had to grab a bottle, of course. They will have a new location with much more land in the future, so we might have to come back to visit. And finally, in the number one spot is Angel's Envy. They had a professional tour, beautiful bottles, great tasting, everything, good chocolate, easily accessible outside of Kentucky, and a unique taste. The only downsides are their bottles are slightly pricier than the average bourbon, and many will say that what they make is not bourbon because of the rules. There are some arguments, and I'm inclined to say that it's not bourbon, but I can't deny how great it tastes. The only reason we didn't get a bottle is because it's fairly easy to find their stuff like at a Costco or something and many other places. So that includes my top 10 list. Let me know what you thought. And the next portion, I'll just be going over the gifts and kind of closing out the video. So please let me know what your favorites are or if you hard disagree with any of my selections. There may be some of you out there who are bourbon aficionados and feel free to educate me more. So there are gifts to the bourbon trail. It has been around since 1999, has continued to expand since then. So many people might have older passports with only a handful of locations in their passport. If you run into any new distilleries, they will just stamp you in the back and I'm just going to show you a few of the well-known gifts at the time of filming this video, and we are still awaiting our official gifts from completing the Craft and Legacy trails. Um, if you really want to know what the gifts are to see if it is worth it, please message me on Discord or send me an email or maybe even a comment. I might follow up on this video later or just leave it as is because there's, there's a little magic in not knowing. Um, they did mention in about six to eight weeks we'll receive our gift in the mail, so we're still waiting on that at the time of filming this video. And uh, also everyone that I talked to really only speculated on what the final gifts were, so I'm not really sure who knows. So for the craft tour, we did get this awesome stave. So when you complete the craft tour, you get the stave and it actually holds all of these coins. So for each region on the craft tour, remember to pick up the coin once you've completed all the respective sections. So these are all pretty awesome and they will naturally fit within the stave. So once you take them out of the packaging, you could glue them in there, just let them sit in there. Still not sure what we're gonna do or if we're just gonna use the stave for what it's meant to be used for, who knows? But these are really cool if you're familiar with challenge coins, nice and heavy. And for the legacy tours, we really only got the glasses and trinkets that came with purchasing tours and tastings. Um, so for example, a glass like this, this is a nice glass for like nosing bourbon and all that stuff or whiskey. And uh, someone also did mention potentially like a, a lapel pin for completing the legacy tour. So who knows? We're still waiting on what the major gift is and we'll see when that happens. So. That was a very long video. I appreciate you watching and please leave me any questions or comments down below. I'll try to answer them to the best of my abilities. I tried to avoid any major spoilers for the distilleries so you have some reason to go there. Thanks again for watching and best of luck to you on your travels. I did pour myself a glass. So cheers, salud, prost, slanche, sante, campai, nazdravi. Oh, that burn.